night stuff is definitely uh, what I call karaoke for uber geeks. <laughs> Especially when half the audience knows what a gopher server is. <laughs> uh, my talk's going to be on space elevators. I think this is the key technology to accessing space for everyone. Uh, I equate it to the inter Intercontinental Railroad that opened up the West. They did that in 1869. It basically allowed people to settle the West. So I'm projecting this one's supposed to be up here, but uh, by 2019 we'll have this technology available to us. It's going to cost about the same as Apollo. So if you put that as a frame of reference, it's not that tremendous of an amount of money to get basically infrastructure built to space and open a super freeway. Now, I was figuring, all right, so once this thing's built, initially there's going to be some use costs that will have to be recovered. But once it's all recovered, I was asking Albert there, how, much, how many points do I need to build up on my Visa card to get up to the moon, you know? This thing is really going to open the frontier. Uh, the, the research I did indicated it might take up to two weeks to get up to geostationary orbit on a space elevator. But hey, man, check out the view. It's beautiful. And not only that, you get to experience low gradients of gravity change. And at some point, you're going to reach the midpoint, and your feet are going to be oriented towards um, the Earth on the way up. But after you get past geostationary orbit, you're going to be looking, your head's going to be pointed back at the Earth. See, so it's just a gradual gradient. And the, the, the key to building the space elevator is uh, carbon nanofiber tubes. And right now, the technology is there that uh, we have 10% of the strength to make the space elevator. If the R&D goes into this, it'll cause breakthroughs that allow us to build this thing within the next, well, I'm shooting for 2019. Um, the way you would build it, one pr presentation, is that you'd put a large satellite in orbit with spools on it. You'd spool one cable up and one cable down to balance it out. And once those cables are established, uh, anchored in Earth, you have to keep stringing up additional spools of cable till you have 200 strands. At that point, you have enough strength to allow large capacities to be taken up to geostationary orbit. Uh, the, the pad that uh, these will be a sea launch type uh, location on Earth, so the thing will be somewhat mobile in case there's storms or something in orbit that might cause, uh, might try to in, inter or hit the cable. But um, one thing that's interesting, once you've built one elevator, what's the first task to do? You immediately have to build a second one just to increase your redundancy and not have to worry about the thing getting destroyed. Um, these things are a lot easier to build on Mars and the moon because the gravity is so much less. They can use existing materials like basically like fishing line on the moon to build a space elevator. So we have the technology to do that. High strength fishing line. Um, and Mars is pretty generous. It already has a, an anchor station in orbit that we could attach a, a space elevator to. And it's loaded with carbon to good building materials. So that's uh, one step at a time, basically. Uh, we have to build this thing on Earth first, right? To get out of the gravity well so we can move on to other worlds. So that's the key, is getting it done here. And uh, once, once it's built, um, my visa points might come in pretty handy. Thinking about 2025, to the moon, baby. Um, there is another technology that I read in, in this book. Uh, it's very interesting. It's called an aerovator. Has anybody heard of this yet? Pretty new stuff. The idea is that you build an airfoil that's basically like a ribbon, and you start to whip this thing around, and the airfoil will take the tip of it up above the Earth's atmosphere and allow you to swing things out into orbit. And it's going to take about 2747 engines on this thing. So figure your hand is a 747 engines. It's whipping this 1,000-kilometer uh, cable, and you put an object on that ribbon, and when it swings out, it gets slung out into orbit. So anyway, for all you rocket fans, guess what? They're the wagons of tomorrow. The space elevator technology and aerovator is the way to go. Once it's built, we have cheap access to space, and we can all get there at some point. Um, there are other tether technologies I wanted to talk to you about, but in five minutes, just not enough time. There's a thing called momentum exchange, and there's a company right in San Diego 
by Joe Carroll that, that actually builds tether technology that's experimented with in space. Uh, this is where I got my research. I highly recommend this book, full of really useful information. And uh, let's go to Mars, baby. Thank you.